Hello and welcome everybody. It's that time again this evening. Welcome Darcy. Hello. Hello Renata. Hello Bonnie. Nice Hi. to have you all here with me. How are you Bonnie? Good. How are you? I've missed seeing your beautiful face, my darling. No, it's been a little while. So you had some acupuncture today. Mm-hmm. Pray tell. It was very good. Um, well, I know you had suggested a female, but that did not pan out with her. So I went and um, did some research and there's a male that's about 20 minutes away from me and his wife works there too. So she helps him awesome. and it, it just felt really good. And he did like a, after the session, he did like a massage technique kind of thing, I guess, just to keep things moving. And it felt really good. And I didn't hear one time that I was old or anything like that. So I was super happy about that. Um, and um, it was just really good. And then when I was leaving, um, one of our patients, who was a very good friend of our family, was sitting in the waiting room. And I was like, see, there's my sign. She's here. This is a great place. It just, It was just good. This so, is great. This is great, Bonnie. Yeah. It's always about finding the right fit. I always find, you know, we are women and it's nice, nice to work with women. But, you know, it's not always that it's, it doesn't have to be women. It's about finding who feels good for this process and this journey. You know, there are great male practitioners. So I do want to make it a point that there are great male practitioners that are working in fertility and doing some great work. So I'm glad that you brought this up because they do have good hearts and they do have good intentions. And I'm just glad that you're in the right place. So happy. For Thank you. you. <laughs> so well, I, I felt really good too, because I felt like he was more focused on, okay, what are we going to do? Not this hasn't been done and this is how old you are. He wasn't going, making me repeat my past basically. So it was really great. This is great. And this is what we want. You know, this is the evolution of the divine man and the divine feminine. <laughs> I love this. Yeah. I see how okay. we've we been. Unmute yourself, my love. Unmute yourself so I can hear you. <laughs> Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did you ask me? I can, well, I can oh, you, Liz. Yeah. Come on, Liz. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> you can't rule me. You can't rule me. I love there your teacher. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah. Everything's you. good. Good to be here. Right. Welcome, Darcy. Finally got you. How are you? Honey? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just kind of sorting out flights to go see my uh, daughter. She wants me to go pick her up. And um, I had a little bit of issues with that today. So a little bit of frustration that I had to work through, but um, I'm trying to stay positive. <laughs> so. Darling, we've got some nice tools for today to help you along this path. It's always a blessing to have you with us, darling. Renata, welcome. Do you want to say a quick hello? Hello. Hello, my beauty. Hi. Guess Hi. what, Dr. Fiona? Yeah? My duck has babies. Can you tell the crew <laughs> we've been doing? Can you please? Yeah. It's so silly. Okay, so um, just, can I turn around my camera? Yeah, just outside my window, right about next to my air conditioner, there's a duck, like a legit American mallard duck. And she decided to do, to have her nest, I gotta turn myself around, have her nest against my house. And um we've been watching this so i've been telling dr fiona about my duck and she says the duck is me it's my mirror and so the duck has uh now after like 30 days of sitting on her eggs now has babies <laughs> love this i'm so excited but she's still sitting on them so they're not yet ready but i think she just had they just hatched maybe today or last yesterday so really soon Oh, this yeah. is amazing, darling. You know, my mirror, my reflection, you know, watch this space. It's your turn next, you know, where we're waxing on. It's amazing. All right. Yeah, I've got yes, all my yes, yes. All, everything crossed for you, darling. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Thank good. You. Welcome, everyone. You're welcome. Thank you, honey. All right, let's 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 make a start. So hope and fertility in perimenopause. I thought there were two words that went with perimenopause because 
I just find this this phase and this transition, you know, there's just so much. Um, uh, women feel a lot of defeat and, and um, they feel like there's a sense of loss. So I'm going to light it all up and we're going to, you know, I'm going to start with, yes, you can get pregnant in perimenopause. Yes. I'm starting with a yes. So first of all, let's just, let's go into what it is because it is the stage before or around menopause that is characterised as a transitional phase on the way to full menopause. And if we look at what menopause is, it's defined at that point in time when a woman has not had a menstrual period for 12 consecutive months. And the term peri comes from Greek and Latin, and in its meaning, it means around or about, okay? In medical terminology, peri is often commonly used to describe the period around a specific event or condition. So in, in, in terms of perimenopause, it refers to this transitional phase leading up to menopause and can last, this is the thing, it can last for several years before the onset of menopause and you know if we look at you know the age that it can begin so I have some women that are starting perimenopause in their you know late 30s but you know I've had patients as early as 35 so you know this is a, a big you know there's a big girth in this transitional phase and during this phase you know where you know there's a lot of um, various changes it's the, the, the perimenopause, it, the, the symptoms vary widely for, for every woman, but some of the most common signs and symptoms that I see in clinic and that you will see in literature is irregular periods. That's the first one that I normally tend to see, changes in the menstrual cycle length, the flow and the frequency, and, and often there's, there's uh, other noticeable signs such as you know, the period's becoming shorter, the period's becoming longer or lighter or heavier. Um, we have an ovulation. This is a menstrual cycle without ovulation. And it just means that you're not ovulating or releasing an egg. We've got the hot flashes or night sweats. There's sudden feelings of heat often accompanied by sweating. And there's redness of the skin. Often it's often around that decolletage and particularly at night, it's more common. We've got sleep disturbances. So this may be difficulty falling asleep, difficulty staying asleep or experiencing restful sleep. And there's, this is often related to the night sweats. And then we've got the mood. You know, the mood changes. We've got increased irritability, mood swings, anxiety and depression. However, I actually relate these mood swings to just being a woman. So I don't really correlate this just to perimenopause because all women have these mood changes. All right, we have vaginal dryness, decreased estrogen levels. Um, they can cause the vaginal dryness. They can cause itching, discomfort, especially during intercourse. We've got um, decreased libido. And this is the changes in the hormones um, that may lead to a decrease in just in sexual desire. So it just might mean that we need a little bit more foreplay, a little bit more instigation and, you know, you know, giving the husbands a nudge and partners a nudge to, you know, actually lead and, you know, maybe opening up the five languages of love so we can start to bring tantra into the mix and fill each other's love cup and what is, you know, your love language. Um, urinary symptoms, this is, this is quite common. Frequency of urination, we may have urgency of urination and just a higher um, risk of urinary tract infections can occur. Breast tenderness, I find this one is also related to all women because a lot of you know younger women, even when they're getting PMT, there's breast tenderness, but it's characterized in this perimenopausal phase. There's tenderness and discomfort in the breasts. Weight gain is a big thing. Weight gain, particularly around the abdomen, um, is common. Uh, hair changes, so thinning of the hair or increased hair loss can occur, as well as increased facial hair. Now, then we've got cognitive changes. These, these are quite big, you know, difficulty concentrating, memory lapses, uh, brain fog, they're, they're often reported. And then lastly, bone loss. You know, we've seen decreasing estrogen levels. What happens is that um, we have a decrease in the, in the bone density and then there's an increased risk of osteoporosis. So I'm just trying to keep it brief. Um, they're the basic signs and symptoms. And just remember that women experience 
perimenopause at different ages. So these changes can start as early as your 30s um, and they're typically affecting you more in your 40s and early 40s. But, you know, the, the girth is long and large. So we need to love and support each other through the whole lifespan because we are women, all right? And it's also, you know, it's important that we understand what's going on in this phase because a lot of us don't, we don't have these conversations enough, all right? Again, I'm going to say this again. Yes, you can get pregnant during perimenopause because the biggest question I get asked in my groups, in my Facebook group and my school group, and especially from my patients, is can I get pregnant in perimenopause? And despite the declining fertility, you can still become pregnant during perimenopause if you do the work, right? Because, you know, I often find women in their 40s are more dedicated to actually, you know, making the lifestyle changes, tidying up the diet, being mindful, having the right mindset, because they are serious about the process. So I actually find women in perimenopause often more fertile than women in their 30s. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but that's just the nature of what I see in clinical practice. Okay, so until you are in full menopause and you are ovulating, all right, even though it might be irregular, it's still possible. Even with the drop in estrogen, most women will continue to ovulate and menstruate during perimenopause. Okay, so I think it's a it's just an overwhelming, resounding yes. I love that word, yes, yes, the sibilance of S. Don't you love that? Yes, you can. All right, so pregnancy during uh, perimenopause, it may have an increased risk, like risk factors, all right, alongside you know, decreased odds of success, but it's still very much possible to get pregnant. Now, some women can even get pregnant when they're already pregnant. I thought I'd just throw that one in just from some interest. This rare occurrence of getting pregnant during an existing pregnancy is known as superfetation, all right? Superfetation. And it happens when a woman's already pregnant and becomes pregnant a second time. Isn't that interesting? Ultimately giving birth to twins who are maybe a few days or a few weeks apart in gestation. Isn't that interesting? I love science and I just love new words. Superfetation, superfetation, superfetation. Uh, one in several million. I know it's rare, but I had to bring it up. There are a few recorded cases in medical literature. Um, you know, you're probably more lucky to win the lottery or get struck by lightning, but it does occur. So, you know, older women are also likely to have um, other health factors, all right, we're going to go into those, all right, we want to know what the risk factors are so that you can, we can jump on them quickly. This is the great thing. Once you know what to look for, when things start to come up, you can go, right, Fiona's already had this conversation with me, right, we know what to do, we know how to address it, we know how to prepare ourselves going into this transition. All right, so high blood pressure is one thing. We have more genetic predispositions. Now, you know, I have a patient, you know, at the moment, and she's got low ferritin but high iron saturation. So it's like this, 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 this might be a genetic predisposition going on because there's that anomaly. Right? We also have conditions of the cervix, um, cervical polyps, cervical dysplasia, so uh, cervitis. HPV. These are conditions that are, you know, there's more risk factors as you get older with this and, and also issues with your ovaries. So more, you know, more occurrence of uh, ovarian cysts, benign tumours, and then you've also got endometriosis, which can be wrapped around your ovaries. Now, regardless of your age related decline, your chances of pregnancy and perimenopause might be reduced, but, then, but it's not impossible. All right. So now let's look at the risk factors that are going to be associated with your pregnancy because let's always assume that if you are ovulating and we are tracking you, you know, we need to look at what are the risk factors in pregnancy because a lot of the time we focus so much on just getting there that we forget once we're there, right, once we're pregnant, we need to know what these risks are, all right, during perimenopause. So miscarriage is a risk. Now, we need to also understand that miscarriage is a global risk. You know, one in eight pregnancies will end in miscarriage. It's more common than you know, all right? The younger you are, like clearly in your 30s, you know, the risk is more like around 10 to 
um, as you get older, the risk, the percentage, that risk factor, it increases to around 20 to 35%. I mean, this is largely due to your hormones, progesterone and estrogen, but also changes due to the lining and the, 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 the egg quality. So that's why we really work a lot on that in your preconception phase. All right, we've also got premature birth. So, you know, premature birth is defined as giving birth anytime before 37 weeks of gestation. Um, and even women, uh, even after controlling the, uh, for other risk factors, research has found that women over 40 are more likely to give birth prematurely. So it's nice to know that this is something you need to look for, all right, premature birth. So we want to prepare you and make sure you have a healthy pregnancy, all right? So, so if you're suffering from um, high blood pressure, you know, um, you know, or placenta previa. This can, this is where you, you know, you have bleeding in the second half of the pregnancy. It's where the placenta attaches low in the uterus. All right, these are the risk factors for why you may have a premature birth. But um, other main complications during pregnancy, during perimenopause, is gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, seizures. As I've mentioned, the placenta previa and preeclampsia. This is a sudden drop in your blood pressure after 20 weeks of pregnancy that can cause damage to the organs and lead to death. So we need to be, we need to keep our eyes open. All right. Um, you know, often we will, it'll raise the risk of C section, you know, if you do have these conditions. So you will be monitored. But that's the beauty of East meets West, that we can monitor you through your pregnancy. Okay, so women in, this is interesting, women in perimenopause who often wrongly assume they can't get pregnant, right? They wrongly assume, wrongly assume. That's why 75% of pregnancies in women in their 40s are unplanned. 75% are unplanned. That's interesting, isn't it? So we need to plan. We need to plan more because it's happening. You see what I'm saying? It's happening more than you realise. <laughs> see the yes? I want you to leave this talk and go, yes, it's possible. All right, so the treatments that I you know, recommend if you are in this perimenopausal phase of your life is, you know, supporting yourself through this. So acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine, I love this because it's, you know, regulating your hormones. It's going to enhance the blood flow to the lining, especially to the reproductive organs. I love acupuncture for that and the Chinese herbs, improving the ovarian function. All right, we've, it also, what I love about acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine reduces the stress. So stress and anxiety in this phase is just more prevalent, all right? Remember the mood disorders. I mean, women, all women need to reduce stress, but this is the beauty of having your acupuncture. It really just turns on that parasympathetic nervous system. It improves egg quality, reduces that oxidative stress. And, you know, you've got to remember we've got the custom herb formulas that I'll talk about later on um, that, you know, when we, uh, we give you a differential diagnosis. So not everyone gets the same herbs in Chinese medicine. That's the beauty of it. You're unique. You're uniquely you. And so we might start with a base, but we build it and we structure it so it's custom and it's supported. It's not like supplements where one size fits all, like everyone's got a preconception multi, everyone's on GoU10, everyone's on their omega-3 fatty acids, right? That's one size fits all. Chinese medicine is very specific, all right? It's custom herb formulas. You've got IVF, IUI. These are, these are practices and medical interventions that we can use, you know, to help you, you know, when we have obstruction, when it's, you know, it's just a choice that you, you might want to pursue that. You've been trying six to 12 months, you know, you've been rinsing and repeating the process and it just hasn't been happening. There's no structural abnormalities. There's no genetic mutations. You know, you've ticked every box. So that's when, you know, IVF might be the next step for you. Or IUI might, we, you know, normally we'll start with IUI, do about three to six rounds of IUI before we merge into IVF. So don't always feel like you have to go straight into IVF. You can, you can explore holistic therapies and practices 
naturopaths, dietitians. There's lots of other things besides Chinese medicine and acupuncture, kinesiology, Reiki, you know, energy medicine. There's so much you can do before we go straight into IVF and HRT for that matter. All right, so, you know, you can do HRT, bioidentical hormones, even HRT um, to balance the estrogen and progesterone to prepare and get the environment ready. So you can try that. Um, but, you know, we all need, regardless of what, what therapy we try, we all need to apply the lifestyle modifications. We all need a healthy diet. All right, we all need a balanced diet rich in fruit and vegetables and whole grains and lean proteins and healthy fats. You'll hear me talk about all your macros, protein, carbs, fats, and all your antioxidants. So your micronutrients and your macronutrients, healthy diet, because you've got to be able to control the controllables. Diet, you're in control of that. So that's why I teach all of my patients how to become dietitians. By the end of the coaching with me, I swear to God, like Liz said to me yesterday, I could teach a course on this. <laughs> And that's right. It's true. It's absolutely true. You should be able to go and teach a course after you finish your fertility coaching with me, because I teach you the ins and outs of food, exercise, stress management, breath control. OK, these are your lifestyle modifications. So we need to have regular exercise. We need that program. It doesn't have to be, we need a healthy weight. You know, we overweight and being underweight, we've got to find that middle path. So exercise is a big part of it, that lifestyle modification. And we need to find the techniques that work for you, especially in perimenopause, to reduce your stress. So it could be meditation, it could be yoga, Pilates, but practicing even just mindfulness, mindful chewing, right? It all reduces stress and improves our mental health. Let's go into the supplements. All right. Yes, this is one size fits all. My four favorites, we'll talk about the four favorite supplements. I'm big on less is best. All right. So I'm going to tell you the top four. CoQ10, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, all right, and prenatal vitamins. Yet this is your preconception multi, all right? These are the top four. So you should all be on that. Then we tailorize it. The supplements then are tailorized, determined by what you need, right? If you've got chi and blood stagnation, we might give you some L-arginine to open up the blood vessels. You might want to do 500 milligrams of that daily, all right? You might want to, if you've got PCOS, we might add in some myonositol, 2,000 milligrams of fat, all right? If you've got issues with egg quality, all right, alpha lipoic acid, ALA, all right? And we can look at all these other things, right? If you've got endometriosis, N-acetylcysteine, we've, you know, Zinc, vitamin C, all these things are, a lot of these things are in your, your prenatal multi, but I'll always supplement extra vitamin D because we need around 5,000 IU, especially in perimenopause, because of the mood and the cognition, all right, the bone density. That's what vitamin D works on, mood, cognition, and bone density, all right? So, you know, then we can look at DHEA. If you've been doing some bloods and, you know, if I'm seeing some luteal phase defect and, you know, things just aren't happening for you, we could test out your DHEAs, all right? And if it's low, right, if the DHEAs, and I often will test testosterone with that, if it's low, then we might start supplementing 25 to 50 milligrams of DHEA. And we'll always be testing and retesting that. So in addition, you know, you've heard the big NAD, nicotinamide, adenonide, dinucleotide, NAD or NMN, nicotinamide, micronucleotide. So NAD plus NMN, all right, these are crucial for, these are the new kids on the block for perimenopause, all right, and they're involved in energy metabolism. You'll see a lot of women talking about them on the forums. Um, I find they're great for DNA repair, the regulation of cellular aging. Um, so they've done. there's a lot of research studies done on them. One in New South Wales in 2020 looked at the impact of NAD and NMN on declining air quality with age and whether they could be, it could be reversed. And what this animal study found that um, it actually uh, restored the air quality to uh, like a 30 year old air quality. So, you know, in humans, we're not with, with the data is looking very promising, is all I'm saying. So, if you can afford NAD, NMN, we're looking around 250 to 500 milligrams of the NAD and the 250 to 300 milligrams of NMN. 
daily. Okay, so these are the new kids on the box spot for perimenopause. If you want a link to that study, you know, there were limitations to the study that may impact the results. But, you know, from me looking at this study, I thought, wow, this is a, this is a good thing for us. All right, so this could be part of an add-on to a treatment protocol with your supplements. The main thing with supplementation in perimenopause, because our livers are getting compromised, what we want to make sure is that we're not taking too many things. We want to structure it so it's we, we need to make sure that through the day you're not taking everything at once. Like I had one patient, she was just taking everything at once and, you know, you're overloading the liver. So you need to know when to take your vitamins at the right time of the day so you're spreading things out, you're not burdening your liver because your liver has to break everything down. So I had one patient and she got so overburdened, she got pancreatitis and she is in perimenopause, all right? So her, her basically her IVF doctor said, you know, you shouldn't be on all of these medications. And so she got reduced down to two two supplements, right, for her IVF cycle. She now has a little baby girl, by the way, which was wonderful, a wonderful outcome. She had her baby at 45. So that's a really awesome story of a woman in perimenopause. So you can see, yes, it's possible. Medical treatments. Um, there are medical treatments that we can uh, add, you know, if we've got issues with ovulation, Clomid, we've got Letrozole. I'm a big fan of Letrozole over Clomid. Clomid is very drying. And remember, we are drying out in that perimenopausal phase. So um, if you can push, push, push for Letrozole, push for Letrozole, it doesn't affect the lining. I find Clomid affects the lining. And what I'm seeing is women are being unsupervised with the Clomid and they're just doing multiple, multiple, multiple rounds. We want to make sure no more than six rounds on the Clomid. You know, try letrozole, much safer on the body. And we want to always protect the lining. We want, we want those sticky embryos, all right? The lining is everything. So medical treatments that you could look at in terms of surgery, um, we've got procedures to correct abnormalities in the, in, in the lining. Of, you know, if you've got fibroids or polyps, these are just benign tumours. Um, and then we've got platelet-rich plasma for ovarian rejuvenation. This is something that women are exploring. And we've also got stem cell, stem cell transplantation. Now, one question I also get asked, this is an interesting question, how do I know if I'm just in perimenopause or if my symptoms are actually that I'm, that I'm actually pregnant? Because... It's a good question. You know, this was a question that I was asked to me just this week. So I thought I'd just share this one. And, you know, because you've got common overlapping symptoms with pregnancy and, and perimenopause. So a missed period, fatigue, right? Breast tenderness, mood swings, nausea. All right. Now, the main things is clearly, you know, we're looking for that morning sickness. It's persistent. It's more persistent nausea and vomiting usually, and it's especially in the morning. All right, that's that's the classic pregnancy symptom. All right, you tend to have more food cravings or aversions, and I'll often find the areola, which is that you know around the nipples, is you know it's just that the skin around the nipples is darker. Okay, that's what happens in pregnancy. Um, unexplained weight gain. We tend to find that, particularly in the abdomen, it usually indicates pregnancy. And obviously, the biggest obvious one is, is the positive pregnancy test. Clearly, we want to see those HCG levels rising. Um, all right, signs and symptoms more specific. Um, what else can I can I go through with you? Um, I might just cover the, the Chinese herbal formulas I might mention. Those, just a couple of them. So Liu Wei Di Huang Wan. This, uh, this is one that I will use when, you know, we're nourishing the yin and the kidneys. If there's that, that hot flushes with night sweats, um, uh, I'll often use uh, by Di Huang Wan. Um, Urshan Tang is another formula. This is when we're treating perimenopausal symptoms, especially the hot flushes, the night sweats, irritability. Um, Gui Tang, this is the restore the spleen formula. So this is when we're getting a lot of sleep disturbances, anxiety, because it really nourishes the spleen and the heart. Xiaoyao San and Jiawei Xiaoyao San, these are great to, you know, balance the hormones, um, the irritability and stress. 
And then we've got Tian Wang Bu Xin Dan. So this is when we've got insomnia, we've got, you know, palpitations and real yin deficiency in calming the heart. Um, some acupuncture points for perimenopause. I really love um, Shen Ting. It's one of my favorites. Shen Ting, all right? Do 24. It's just above that midline on the anterior hairline. And it's great for calming the mind and the irritability. We've got do 20. It's kind of, it's just calming and, sh and yin tongue. All right. I love these three points for perimenopause. We've also got on the wrist, our, you know, Buddha's triangle. We've got, you know, heart seven, pericardium six, lung nine. All right. I'll often get my patients to rung lao gung, which is pericardium eight. It's the labor palace point. And we will rub it and hold Buddha's triangle. All right. And it's really, you can just feel it. All those meridians go up towards the heart. And when you rub your hands, make them warm and hold Buddha's triangle, you can feel that. Ah, oh, wow. I am feeling good. We've got spleen six down on the shin, you know, on the, it's about four finger widths above the ankle bone on the inside. It's that posterior border of the tibia. So spleen six is the intersection of the yin channels, spleen, kidney, and liver. I'll often use spleen six. Kidneys are always supported. So kidney three, kidney nine. Okay, we've also got REN 17 in the chest, right in the middle from your nipples, right in the center. I love REN 17, especially if you're getting that, you know, palpitations, that sweating, because it regulates the chi and it helps with emotional stress and it just vents that heat from the lungs. Okay, so it's going to open up the chest. In addition, I want to finish just quickly because I'm trying to keep the talk really condensed and tight and there's so much more I could talk about, but I wanted to condense it so I can open up the Q&A for you because I am going to open up some questions so you can ask me your questions. Please ask your questions directly to me. But as we come to the end, I want to leave you with this beautiful, profound passage from the Tao Te Ching. I love words. I'm a wordsmith. So this, this is from the Tao Te Ching. The valley of the spirit never dies. It is named the mysterious feminine. And the doorway of the mysterious feminine is the base from which heaven and earth sprang. It is where there within us all this while. Draw upon it as you will. It never runs dry. So perimenopause, as I said, it's often viewed through the lens of loss or depletion, but it's actually a powerful call to the divine, all right, to reconnect to the mystery, to the deep valley and the spirit within us, okay, and it's still a great time of fertility, all right, it's that ability, that, that ability to conceive, it remains possible, and many women do successfully become pregnant during this phase, so just know perimenopause is not the end of fertility, but rather a period of transition. It's where the potential for new life, it still exists alongside us with the profound transformation that's taking place. So it's a celebration. This is what I see as perimenopause. It's a celebration of our enduring strength and an affirmation that the wellspring of the goddess within us never runs dry. Thank you. <laughs> who wants to come and have a I have a question um can you hear me no I can hear you Darcy okay um so you had mentioned that the um Chinese herbal teas are more specific to a woman's symptoms and I know that um the last time and you know maybe my you know the biochemical in my tongue might have changed you know from last month but um Last time you had given me a, you know, a Chinese herbal tea um, and I'm continuing to, to drink it, but I'm starting to feel like it's, I know it's supposed to tonify your blood, but I'm starting to feel like that has changed and I'm getting kind of like these periods where I'm extremely exhausted. And maybe again, that has something to do with some you know something in my biochemistry changed from last month to now you know what I mean well, your, so, your always changes you change 
And it's great that you bring that up because you don't stay on the same formula forever. You're, you know, and so this is where you, when you do a revision with your practitioner, and if that's me, then then we revise and go, all right, I'm feeling that I'm feeling depleted and, and low energy. So what we would put in your formula is that we would make change the prescription. We may add in some chi tonics, you know, we may, it may, add, it may add in some ginseng, some renjin. All right. And so these are herbs that will give you energy. And in addition to that, when I'm seeing that, you know, my patients are really tired and the energy is low, and then it's like, all right, how's your diet? Have, you know, because your diet will reflect your energy levels. So are mm -hmm. you eating enough? Are you eating every three to four hours? You know, it's because it's the synchronicity of what you control. And obviously the herbs are an addition to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cause I know a lot of things have changed. I'm like laying out in the sun more and I'm exercising more and I've, you know, been a little bit more strict with my diet. So there this, it is. You know, Already you've said you're exercising more. When you exercise more, we need yeah. more fuel for the body. So it could yeah. be right, post exercise, you know, let's make sure that you're carrying stuff with you. So then you're not okay those peaks and troughs with the energy levels or at the end of the day my favorite thing is viburita karani legs up the wall it just aids that venous blood return it pulls the energy into the lake right into the pelvis where we need okay. the blood where do we need it down in the pelvis where your reproductive organs are for the lining so i would be looking at restor restorative practices as you increase your exercise and then we can modify your herbs like that's that's a no brainer. We can add mm -hmm. in, you know, some more things that might, you know, your digestion might need some more support. So you're digesting your herbs better. Okay. There's always to tweak things, but it's always good to bring this up, Darcy, because you know you always revise the herbs. They always get revised, always. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can do that next time. No talk. No problem. Thanks. Any other questions? I have a question. It's yeah. late. Sorry, I'm dark now. <laughs> it's dark <laughs> outside now. <laughs> um, you mentioned NAD and NM, NMN that I've never heard of. Yeah. Um, as DNA repair, and you mentioned something about you know helping with low Sorry. egg quality. Egg quality. Mm, and absolutely. I'm, I'm wondering, is there a test or marker for egg quality? No, are, not. are you just assuming that as we age, it goes down? Well, what they do, they see what they've done in these studies with mice is they go in and they actually, you know, you can only study equality once it's been fertilized and, you know, it's, that's the only way to do it. There's no test for equality before the eggs fertilize and they've been extracted from you. So that's why this study was done in rats and mice. So, you know, that's why they're able to go in, fertilize the eggs and actually extract them and analyze it after their treatment so sadly this is where it's like the the results with humans the data is limited you see what i'm saying but in mice yeah. it's looking promising yeah they were able to reverse engineer the quality of the age of the eggs to that of a 30 year old in these mice which is wow i know but yeah you would you so, yeah that sounds would good you, would I you think, recommend would you just recommend that most I would. This is a new study. I can share the study with you. Yeah. So N NAD plus NMN, like the NAD, it's it's found in li literally all living things. It's essential for every biological process. Ned. Okay. It's, we'll often see this part of the COVID protocols now. You know, they're using that before you know energy metabolism and all of these cellular processes. So it's used oh, a lot right. respiratorily, but now it's having a flow and effect into the fertility niche, and it makes mm -hmm. sense. It makes sense, you know, for preserving and enhancing fertility too. You know, if it's going to repair your lungs, it's of course it's going to have an impact on your eggs. You know, because we are we are um, the microcosm of the macrocosm. The eggs are the microcosm of the macrocosm. Right. So, of course, I would give it a go. Okay, and take them. There, there are two different supplements that you take yeah. together. Sometimes they're mixed together. They're dispensed okay. together. Try and get them together. NAD, capital NAD. Nicotinamide, aden adenine, dinucleotide, and then NMN, nicotinamide, mononucleotide. It's okay. A bit, it's a bit of a tongue twister. But, yeah, I would definitely add that. 
give it a go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. How are we? I'm good. How are you? Hi, oh, Jessica. Good. So back, um, piggybacking off of what she just mentioned about the uh, the NAD and the NMN. Yeah. I know you said to get them together if you can, but yeah. suggestions on sites as to where to buy them from or yeah. who to Look, buy them there's, from? There's a, there's a plethora of of recommendations. There's not one off the top of my head, but I can I can drop it in Skype for you, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. You're welcome. Naomi, hello, darling. You gonna say hello to me? Hello, you gonna unmute yourself? Can you unmute yourself? Maybe not. No, that's okay. I'm just I'm just giving her a beautiful wave. Um, all right. I think any more questions? I don't think we have any more questions. Oops. Sorry, didn't realize I was muted. <laughs> Here we go. Hello, <laughs> sweetheart. Yeah. Okay. Good evening. So nice to see you. And do you have any questions for me? Just taking it all in. I love that. I love that. Darling, <laughs> did you love the, the Tao Te Ching quote? I love this quote. I thought yeah. words are beautiful. And, you know, that this is like, if you look at the Tao Te Ching, it was just like, it's almost like my, my Bible, right? It is just... <laughs> These words have been around forever and a day. It's what actually got me into Chinese medicine. So that's why I was wanting to bring us back to the old words, the old ways, the ancient ways. So I'm glad you joined me, Naomi. It's great to see your face. Mm -hmm. You too. All right, ladies. Thank Can you. Do you want to mention the cacao ceremony tomorrow? Oh, yes, I will. Thank you for the reminder. All right. So I just want to let you all know that I am now going to be uh, doing a weekly cacao circle and this is going to be a really informal circle it's going to be you know bring your cacao now some of you may not have cacao doesn't mean you can't join you can just bring your favorite cuppa all right and we're going to sit and we're just going to sit in a circle with women around a fire and a, a metaphorical fire but it's a sharing circle sharing our highs sharing our wins sharing our brags you know, I want to bring bragging back because often the time we tend to, you know, share our disappointments and losses. So I want to bring the brag back. I want to bring the playfulness and the goddess back. But it's just going to be a forum. You don't always have to tear. You might just always want to just take it in like Naomi. You can listen and just absorb, you know. So sometimes I don't feel like speaking and I'll get other people to lead um, but it's just an opportunity for us to sit as women because that's what we used to do millions years, of years ago we sat around the fire and it's a metaphorical fire but that's what we're going to do and, and it won't be this, recorded this one won't be recorded no so that's where it's going to be all anonymous and you know so I've shared the links feel free to, feel free to share it with anyone in your family and your network that might want to be part of this right because I like this secret women's business you know Naomi might want to bring your daughter and and she might want to bring her friend it's just a gathering of women I love gatherings of women I think we need to res resurrect these red tents these circles of women to share love and and lift each other up and it doesn't matter what phase of your life you're in you know you could bring along your child who's just getting her period and we can do a red tent around her and we can all share what our first period was like all right so it doesn't have to be trying to have a baby or you know in perimenopause it, it, you know I've even I've invited some of my old patients that have transitioned into full menopause so it's a big circle and it's a, just a beautiful idea. So I'm sharing it with all of you. It's tomorrow night, 8 p.m. EST. So the link that you have, use that link because it's going to be the same link every week. So join as you will. So thank you. Well, no, for... it's a different link. It's a, a link that we post in the uh, in the ceremony group. Oh, right. Okay. It's the link that's going to be posted in the school group. But these ladies can share their link. I don't mind. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you this evening. Thank you for listening. I will see you again next week. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.